So this is Miss Lumpkins, and today we're going to be talking about end of war things for Civil War. Okay, so the war is kind of like going to an end. All right. So we have the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, so this Emancipation was written after the Battle of Antietam, which is the deadliest battle in the Civil War. Um, Lincoln's executive order went into effect on January 1st, 1863. So this is towards the end of the war. Um, and what it does is that it freed the slaves in the rebelling states, but not in the, the slaves in the border states. So remember, in the Union, most of our states have outlawed slavery except for our five border states. They still have slavery. And with this Emancipation Proclamation, um, he doesn't free the slaves in, uh, in those border states. It's only in the rebelling states, which is the Confederacy. Um, now, ultimately, this doesn't actually do anything because he has zero authority to actually, um, to actually, like, free them because the confederacy is technically not a part of the united states at this moment um but eventually we will outlaw slavery with the 13th amendment all right so uh the war is going to end right shortly after the fall of uh petersburg uh robert e lee is going to surrender to lewis s grant at abomattox courthouse on April 9th, 1865, uh, in the weeks that followed, the rest of the Confederate troops are going to surrender and the war is going to end. When you, during war, when you capture the main general for the other side and that main general surrenders, so this case, Robert E. Lee is going to surrender to Ulysses S. Grant, um, that's like end of war. Like, we're, we're done. That's, that's it. No more. Um. So the war has now ended, right? This is a picture of the um, the surrender. You have Ulysses S. Grant here. Let me show you real fast. So you have Ulysses S. Grant right here. He, you can tell because he is in the blue uh, uniform. Our Union soldiers were known as the blue. They wore blue uh, uniforms. This is Robert E. Lee right here. Um, he is in gray. You can tell he's Confederate because he's in gray. The Confederates wore uh, gray uniforms. Um, so this is the little surrender that we've got going on here. All right, so then that leads us to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, right? Um, it happened... Oh, sorry. Uh, it happened in April 14th, 1865. Uh, John Wilkes Booth is going to assassinate Lincoln at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Um, there, uh, that little picture is like them in the theater. He comes up behind them in the presidential uh, suite, the like the balcony that the president would and his family would go and see. Um. The vice president, Andrew Johnson, is going to become president and was responsible for putting the nation back together, which is Reconstruction. We're going to get into this in our next unit, which is all about Reconstruction. Um, but just spoiler alert, Andrew Johnson, uh, not the best guy. Uh, he's a Southern sympathizer, so he's going to let a lot of things slide that he shouldn't. Uh, but that's... All right, so let's talk about the results of this war. So first off, more than 620,000 uh, soldiers are going to die in this war. Um, that includes those who died in actual battle from battle wounds, from disease and infection and in prison camps. Um, now, this is the deadliest uh, war in American history. Um, we have more Americans die in this war alone than any other war we have ever fought in. But if you think about it, we were fighting our own people. So obviously we're going to have a lot more casualties. All right. Uh, $15 billion is going to, um, we're going to have in war costs and property losses. Remember, part of the strategy of the North was to literally destroy the South. So we're going to have to like, uh, figure that out during reconstruction as well in our next unit because especially William Sherman he just like obliterates the south 
Um, we're going to see the supremacy of the federal government over state governments. The Civil War basically like solidifies this conflict that we've had multiple times with the nullification crisis and all of those things where is the federal government more important than the state governments? And the answer is yes, you, the states must follow the federal government. Um, we're also going to see inflation. So what inflation means is that um, money is... Um, it's worth less than it was at the beginning of this war. That's an economic thing. You'll learn more about economics when you get into high school. But just know that the dollar isn't worth as much as it used to be, which is going to be a problem. Uh, we're going to see the end of slavery because um, Abraham Lincoln, when he did the Emancipation Proclamation, he, um, he made this war about slavery. So we're going to end officially slavery. We are also going to destroy the southern economy. The southern economy is solely based on slavery and plantations. Um, they are agricultural. Remember, they are not industrialized. They don't have a lot of other different industries. They are like all eggs in one basket kind of thing. So when we take away slavery from them, their entire economy is going to just die. Um, because you can't make a lot of money uh, when you do cash crops when you actually have to pay your workers. Um, so the economy in the South is going to be very broken. All right, and then finally, it's going to help transform the Northeast into an industrial power. So because of the Civil War and the destruction of the Southern economy and how it basically just collapses without the institution of slavery, it's going to like highlight the fact that industrialization is the way to go, that slavery is not. We're gonna start moving past agriculture. Not to say that we don't have agriculture because that's not true, we still have it. It's just not the main economy of our country anymore. Um, and so that's gonna happen with this war.